Welcome back, Rankers. Thank you very much to Jen Frame, who organised Social Media Masterclass last week and brought David, Miam and Scott out here. It was fantastic seeing him again. He's a good mate and uh, a client. And also I've seen the, his presentation before and read both his books. And if you are in marketing and PR, you really need to get onto his stuff because it is gold. And the guy went for about, I don't know, spoke for about eight hours nonstop, which was, which was pretty impressive in and of itself. Okay, just quickly this week, I wanted to touch on a technique, an SEO technique, that I'm seeing a lot more coming out of uh, PR agencies. Now, the person who brought this to my attention uh, was Andrew, who I met last week at uh, Social Media Masterclass, Andrew 202065, uh, that man there, um, who uh, has his own PR company. Now, he explained that there's... A lot of people are calling this thing called link baiting in the PR industry where they go in and they leave a, a link and a comment on someone's blog that's relevant to one of their client's products. That's not link baiting, that is comment spam. Um, the story comes out of uh, Mumbrella and if you go and have a look at there, you can see this gentleman here, Mr. Jeffrey Emerson is saying it's, it's, it's a link bait job, there's no two ways about it, it's black hat but it's not spam. Okay, it's spam. All right, if it walks like a duck, it's spam. Um, Black Hat is about tricking the Google algorithm. It isn't about going and littering other people's sites, which is what, basically what you're doing when you jump in on a blog thread or have people employed to jump in on a blog thread and look for comments about their clients' products or services and then leave a comment and leave a link without disclosing the fact that you're being paid by that company to do that. Now, the, re the many reasons why that's bad and unethical and all those sorts of things. Um, but basically, at the end of the day, you're passing your marketing costs onto the owner of that blog. And uh, Jeffrey here has said that it's no, no two ways about it as well, that it's SEO. Well, it, it's, no, it's not good SEO. It's very bad SEO. It's SEO that no longer works. It was quite popular a few years back. But... These days, most people are no following their, uh, any, any links that are placed in their blogs, which means they become redundant as far as uh, Google's concerned. Google will not follow those links, and so they absolutely carry no link juice to the site that you're linking to. So if you're trying to go into blogs and, and leave comments and links in order to get ranked higher, it ain't going to work, okay? So don't do it. It's, it's bad form, and really, it, it could backfire really, really badly on your brand, and so if you do have a brand that you're trying to uh, protect online and, and, and make more popular online, I would suggest staying away from techniques like this. Um, to me, it's, it's, it's quite reprehensible. I've seen it come out of the PR industry. I uh, got on to Lloyd Gross, uh, the president of um, uh, the Public Relations Institute of Australia, yesterday and asked him, and sure enough, if you go and have a look at this, uh, these clauses in their policy, certainly the PR Institute wouldn't endorse something like this. I've also spoken to a couple of other people, a couple of other local uh, SEOs in the biz who uh, we're good mates with, and uh, they're quite astounded and surprised by that technique as well. So SEO is not PR. And if you don't know what you're doing with SEO, you're going to get yourself into a lot of trouble very, very quickly. Um, and to give you an idea of that, there was a, there was a story just a couple of weeks ago in uh, the Australian Financial Review um, by, uh, regarding a, um, a company called Braincorp who went belly up, apparently, uh, and this is according to the story in Fairfax newspapers over here, they went belly up apparently because uh, Google's algorithm changed and they lost their rankings overnight and it was bringing in a lot of their revenue. Now, the only reason that you would disappear, and here's the story here, and thank you, Chris Thomas of Rezio for pointing that story out. The only reason that you will disappear overnight from a, from a algorithm change is if you're doing something extremely dodgy. All right, so the rule is don't do anything dodgy. Just look at the number one result for whatever the phrase is that you want to rank for and try to go one better. It's as simple as that. It really doesn't get any harder. That's the particular story I was looking for. And if you want to find out why um, uh, doing things dodgy with Google is a bad idea, then I suggest go and read that story. But right now, I'm going to put on a question. First question that, that I asked over me and Scott uh, last week, the Social Media Masterclass, and we'll see you next week. You
<laughs> All right, go ahead, Jim, whenever you're ready. All right, sitting here with David Meerman Scott in Melbourne. David's over here for the Social Media Masterclass. Welcome, David. Hey, thanks, Jim. Good to be here. Hey, you've been to Melbourne before? Yeah, maybe three or four times, I guess. Yeah, right. Um, used to come a long time ago, though. Last time I was here was about 15 years ago. All right. Now, David, your book, uh, World's Best Seller, uh, in the business list, in, in New York Times again, uh, The New Rules of Marketing yep, and PR. Yeah, New Rules of Marketing and PR. It's actually the Business Week bestseller list. Business Week. Best Six sellers. months this year. It's pretty cool. Okay. Now, what, what do you think is the major thing that a, a PR company uh, or, a, or a marketing person should be looking at with social media. I mean, we hear so many people saying, well, you've got to get into social media, but what does that actually mean? You know, I think social media is a term that's just full of, of, of um, doubt and, and, and um, confusion. It's a weird term. I actually try not to use it, even though here I am leading a social media masterclass. Um, what I like to suggest to people to think about is that there's four ways to generate attention. You can buy attention with advertising, you can work with the media to generate attention to, to be written about or broadcast about in the editorial section. You can hire salespeople to bug people one at a time to get attention. Or you can earn it online. You can earn it by creating a YouTube video, being on Facebook, being on Twitter, um, creating an ebook, writing a great blog post, whatever it is. You can earn attention by creating content. So rather than think about social media as this sort of thing, and people are like, what's that? That's Twitter, right? Rather, think about it as you can, anybody, you, me, anyone who's listening in can create something online which helps to generate attention for your organization. Where, where do you see traditional media fitting into that model? I mean, we, we PR agencies are always trying to get uh, yeah. coverage in traditional media, but where does that fit? I think, I think that the other ways of generating attention are all still valid. I mean, yeah. it's still absolutely appropriate if it works for you to advertise on radio, television, magazines, newspapers, billboards, or whatever. It's also probably appropriate for many organizations to continue to proactively contact members of the media to get coverage or to hire a team of salespeople to go out there. But those aren't the only ways. And so if, if your business is growing really quickly and you're profitable and everyone's happy and healthy and uh, you know the world is great, Maybe you don't need social media. Yeah, right. But I don't know many yeah, organizations yeah. that are feeling that way. Yeah. Um, so social media is another way to generate okay. attention. Thanks very much. Bye.